Breaking right now. The medical examiner confirms to us a man pulled from Lake Michigan last night has died. Shortly before sunset, a man who was at Clody Park in Whitefish Bay told today's TMJ4 he heard a man screaming for help in the lake. Anthony Turner tells us he immediately ran into the water, got within 20 and 30 feet of the victim. However, he said he was just too cold and had to turn around. He got out there, pulled the man in. Once we got him close enough, me, Jay, and two other guys pulled the man with the stick, got him on the beach. Others called 911. Officers arrived to assist this victim. The man's name has not yet been released. New this morning, Milwaukee police investigating a double shooting and murder from overnight. This happened at a home near Buffalo and Concordia. One man was shot and killed. A second man was shot and taken to the hospital for treatment. Police have not made any arrests in this case. Police also investigating a murder that happened yesterday afternoon near 22nd and Locust. A 25 year old woman was shot and killed after a fight. An 18 year old man was also shot and injured. A Milwaukee police officer survived an encounter with an armed suspect last night. This happened near 26 an hour at about 8 o'clock. A plainclothes MPD officer was conducting an investigation when someone fired at this officer, nearly striking him. The suspect took off in a car, which then crashed near 12th and Lloyd, with men with criminal records arrested. The Marathon County father who triggered a statewide Amber Alert is behind bars right now this morning. Police say Jamie Hunt was armed when he took off with his son Jaden yesterday afternoon. The Amber Alert was canceled just before 10 last night. Both were found safe near a home where Jaden was taken. This critically missing boy was also found safe this weekend. Police tell us nine year old Aaron Whitlock was found last night near 76 and North. He has been last seen near 35th and Movina. Vice President Mike Pence promised to end Obamacare during a stop in Milwaukee. He spoke yesterday at Direct Supply Company, a company that sells equipment for services for senior living communities. Pence said the Trump administration will replace the health care law with a system that gives greater flexibility over coverage for its residents. U.S. Senator Tammy Baldwin stepped in to issue this statement about Pence's speech, saying in part working families in Wisconsin who are already struggling to make ends meet will especially be hit hard by this partisan legislation. She goes on to write Vice President Mike Pence needs to explain to Wisconsin families why he wants Washington to make them pay for less care and increase the number of people who are uninsured. Milwaukee yesterday you may have felt it. It reached 90 degrees for the first time this year. Many people were out doing whatever they could to stay cool. Thousands flocked to Bradford Beach yesterday to catch the rays in their swimsuits and party in the sand. The few who ventured out in the water called it a very rude awakening. That's because the water temperature was just 53 degrees. According to the National Center for Cold Water Safety, that's considered very dangerously cold, potentially life threatening. I was going to get in with the kids and then I put a toe in there. I'm like, oh, no. That's good thinking. Cold shock reaches its maximum intensity between 50 and 60 degrees after just a few minutes. We have a link to heat safety reminders from the Milwaukee County Health Department at TMJ4.com slash links. And we have a winner. Someone in California is lucky this morning, waking up matching all six Powerball numbers to claim an estimated $447 million jackpot. The Powerball spokesman says the location where the winning ticket was sold is not immediately available. They just know the state. The winning numbers are 32, 26, 20, 38, and 58. 506 this morning coming up on live at daybreak on today's TMG4. Another top Trump administration official plans to testify before Congress. But first, we're getting our first look at fake devices worn by terrorists who went on a killing spree in the heart of London. Good Sunday morning. It is coming up on 510 and we are off to a beautiful start on this Sunday morning. 
In fact, this is probably the most comfortable time as you're looking at the Fox River in downtown Waukesha. Here's another view uh, in Waukesha. This is out at Steinhoffels right off Interstate 94. Our camera is pointed to the north and to the west, and you can see mostly clear skies and a very comfortable start out there right now. I say comfortable because it's all relative, right? Right now, it's much more comfortable than it will be later on today. Out in Waukesha, you're waking up to 70 degrees. Good morning to you. Your dew points at 55 and the wind is out of the south southwest at seven miles an hour and the sunrise now just a minute and a half away. Officially sunset tonight is at 831. Again, a very warm start out there. We have anywhere between 70 in Waukesha and Port Washington to 76 in Sheboygan. We're at 74 in Milwaukee. We're seeing 75 for you this morning in Fond du Lac. Also out in Madison where it is 75 as well. We are dry. We don't have any thunderstorms out there for now and it looks like we'll stay dry throughout the day. That means a lot of sunshine. Your UV index forecast today is a nine. It's almost as high as it can get. That means you can get a burn in 30 minutes or less time if you have any unprotected skin out there. That means uh, long sleeve shirts, hats, sunscreen, all good things to have around today. Let's check out the temperatures with future temps. Take you through the morning. We're going to quickly get into the 80s. So by 11 o'clock, we're in the 80s, pretty much all locations. Later on this afternoon, high temperatures, Julia, hitting pretty much 90 degrees in just about all locations. Now, eventually we'll get into some rain to help us cool down. I'll show you when that arrives with your Storm Team 4 forecast. All right, Mark, thank you. London Metropolitan Police released these pictures of fake, fake explosive belts being worn by men who carried out an attack in the British capital last week. These are water bottles just covered with duct tape. The attackers drove a rented van into pedestrians on the London Bridge, killing three, then jumped out and stabbed people at a market. Five people died of stab wounds. Almost 50 people were wounded in this attack. Looking ahead, Attorney General Jeff Sessions says he plans to testify before the Senate Intelligence Committee on Tuesday. In a letter released yesterday, Sessions says he would appear before this committee in light of last week's te testimony by former FBI Director James Comey. During his testimony last week, Comey said he couldn't explain why Sessions played a role in the president's decision to fire him, despite his recusal from the Russia investigation. 512 this Sunday morning. Much more still to come on live at daybreak. Hope you're staying cool so far. Coming up, a real life superhero is gone, but not forgotten. We take a look back at the career of Adam West. Plus, if you're ready for some cool temps, Mark will let you know when the heat breaks in your full seven day. Coming up next.
Welcome back. I hope you got a chance to go outside. I only did for a little tiny bit with my pup because, mm -hmm. you know, it, the concrete gets a little hot and it could yeah. burn your paws. So just think about your little furry friends today. You know? <laughs> your furry friends. I agree. Uh, we have a black lab. He does not like the heat, so he'll swim oh, all I day bet. in this kind of weather, but he will not enjoy walks. So yeah, obviously take that into consideration and yourself too. You don't want to overdo it. It's going to be another scorcher out there today. 73 already in Kenosha. So this is the time of day. If you really want to exert yourself where it's a lot safer to do it than say two o'clock this afternoon. Kenosha, uh, the wind right now southwest at 11. You're off to a very nice start to the day. And as I mentioned, the next couple of hours can be pretty nice before we start to see these temperatures really start to crank up into that uncomfortable zone when we start to get into the mid to upper 80s and even some low 90s out there. Right now we're 70 to 76 as far as your temperatures here in Milwaukee County along the lakefront. A little bit cooler there. South Milwaukee and Oak Creek, you're at 69 degrees. Downtown, 74. Shorewood, 71 degrees. 73. Brown Deer, Tosa, Glendale, West Allis, Franklin, you're 71 right now. 72 in Greendale. And a southwest wind steady at 16 miles an hour. So the weather headlines on this Sunday morning. The sizzle continues today. So be prepared for that. If you don't have access to air conditioning, go to a public area. You can get into it. Movie theaters, malls. Well, malls are free, so that's good air conditioning there. Some clouds will eventually come in here uh, later on today, mainly from thunderstorms to our north and west. But eventually we'll get some rain in here, courtesy of thunderstorms. Storms. It's going to take uh, another day or two before that happens. Right now, clean sweep on Storm Team 4 Max. So nice quiet start on this Sunday morning. We do have this front across northern Wisconsin and Minnesota. This is going to be the focus for thunderstorms today, tomorrow, even into Tuesday and Wednesday. It's going to be around pretty much all week long. It separates the hot sticky from the more comfortable air and then along it, thunderstorms fire up this morning. Those thunderstorms are back here across South Dakota. They will continue to track north and east along that front and that means thunderstorms unfortunately not for us but central and northern Wisconsin that uh, will help them cool down but with that the risk of severe weather a slight and enhanced risk with the two shades you see on here across northern Wisconsin the timing for this will be later on today we're talking the afternoon and the evening hours and maybe some rain for Fond du Lac and Sheboygan County so let's track that for you on future forecast and take you through the morning hours again nice and quiet out there but by noon thunderstorms move into northwestern Wisconsin better chance for thunderstorms developing in northern Wisconsin later on this evening. Notice here at 7 o'clock on your Sunday, so later on this evening, we are sunny and dry throughout the entire day. Overnight tonight, we could get an isolated shower for our northern counties. I don't know if it'll make it all the way down here into the city. And then your Monday, an isolated shower is possible during the afternoon hours. That is about it. Otherwise, we're going to stay with hot and also sunny weather. And today's that means a high of 90 degrees for the second day in a row on your Storm Team 4 forecast. It'll be breezy as well. That wind gusting 25 to 30 miles an hour. Overnight tonight, partly cloudy, warm 70 degrees for your overnight low. And your Storm Team 4 seven day forecast. Here's what you can expect. Uh, more heat, more humidity. Tomorrow's high 91 degrees on Tuesday, a high temperature of 88 degrees, Wednesday 86. Note the thunderstorms here. Uh, we've got uh, isolated to scattered thunderstorms pretty much each day from uh, Monday all the way into Friday and Saturday of the upcoming weekend, Julia. All right, thanks so much. Fans are mourning the death of television original Batman. Adam West, West family says he died peacefully in his sleep. Friday night after a short battle with leukemia. CNN's Paul Verkamen takes a look back at West's career. Adam West was... Batman reruns turbo boosted West to global hero status long after his three original Batman seasons ended in 1968. Adam West! 40 years later, the self-deprecating witty West got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I think I have the record as the actor who's waited the longest <laughs> to get his star on the sidewalk. <laughs> Adam West was born William West Anderson in Walla Walla, Washington. Young Adam West possessed brawn and brains, a degree in literature and psychology from Whitman College. West developed that trademark voice as a disc jockey and his Batman spoke with an elevated vocabulary. Catwoman, I find you to be odious, abhorrent, 
and insegrivious. Sure, the show was campy, but Batman's alter ego, Bruce Wayne, offered even more substance. All music is important, Dick. It's the universal language. He has to be uh, mature enough to have a ward. Yeah. Uh, he's the mentor, or he has adopted a son, so to speak. Precisely, Robin. But Batman's cape seemed to permanently hang around West's neck. If I telephone to make an international call, the operator knows my voice immediately, as does everyone else. West got typecast. When you wear a mask and funny tights, it gets a little frustrating from time to time, and I was. I, I was turned down for a number of uh, parts uh, over the years, I feel, because of that. The other acting parts Wes did get seemed to vanish in the TV haze. Hey, kids, Batman! But cartoons revived him. Of course I'm Batman. Adam West played Adam West on The Simpsons. Mayor West? Then the unrelated eccentric mayor Adam West on Family no. Guy. I stand behind my decision. This press conference is over. I can't see you now. I can't hear you now. You're not here now. La, 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 la. We get asked all the time at Family Guy, do we have a lot of drugs lying around the office? <laughs> no, we have Adam West. A wacky intellectual family man you'd think West might dodge typecasting, but the image of him as Batman obliterated all others, and West wasn't bitter about being so linked to a man in tights. Wherever I go in the world, there's such a wonderful uh, rapport with our Batman that it's neat. People come out and play entire scenes for me unsolicited, but I gotta laugh. How lucky can a person get, I mean, to, to have been part of something that's a classic. He'll always live on on film. That was great. Coming up, the Bucks make a major announcement. One of the cool things they're doing to celebrate their 50th anniversary and a huge and costly crash at this IndyCar event. How many cars involved and what happened to the drivers? That's still ahead on Live at Daybreak. Good morning, I'm Elise Meneker and this is your Daybreak Sports. The Bucks with a major announcement. They will play one regular season game at the Mecca this season. We now know it as UWM Panther Arena. It's all in celebration of the team's 50th anniversary. Now we're reimagining the future. So now we're actually like putting content into the future, which is so cool. That's exciting. Back to college days. It'll be a little bit smaller gym, a little bit more intensity. So. Um, I'm excited to do it. U.S. Open week starts tomorrow. The major being played in Wisconsin for the first time yesterday. Aaron Hills tweeted out this photo saying the U.S. Open flags came out. The major starts Thursday. Practice rounds begin tomorrow. His name has been connected with openings for the second straight year, but Marquette Lacrosse head coach Joe Amplo is staying right where he is. Amplo is named the first head coach in Marquette men's lacrosse history in 2011. The team won its second straight Big East Conference tournament title this past season to advance to the NCAA championship where it lost to four seeded Notre Dame in the first round. The Brewers with the series finale against the Diamondbacks today. It's a 3-10 first pitch. That's your Daybreak Sports. I'm Elise Meneker. Find it oh. as they nearly come oh, to oh, 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 the big one. That's the big one. Big. Wow, a huge six car accident last night's IndyCar race at Texas Motor Speedway. Look at that. Thankfully, all drivers involved amazingly were checked and released from the care center. 14 drivers did not finish because of all this. It must run in the family. Tapper, it became behind the edge to edge out Irish war cry at yesterday's Belmont Stakes. His brother won the race last year. There you go. Neither the Kentucky Derby winner nor the Preakness winner competed. Looks like they're so happy there. Coming up on Live at Daybreak on today's TMJ4. A look at all your top stories will get you up to date, including that breaking news from overnight. A man drowned in Lake Michigan. Plus, as we approach the one-year anniversary of the deadly Pulse nightclub attack, how money raised last year is going to a good use. Right now, from Milwaukee, this is today's TMJ4 Live at Daybreak. Good morning to you. Happy Sunday. I'm Julia Fellow. I'll check up your hot forecast in just a minute with meteorologist Mark McGinnis. But first, here's your top stories at 530. And breaking overnight, the medical examiner just confirmed to us a man pulled from Lake Michigan has died. This happened last night at Clody Park in Whitefish Bay. A witness says he tried to save the man, but the water was simply too cold for him. 
The victim was rushed to the hospital in grave condition and later died. Milwaukee police investigating a double shooting and murder from overnight. This happened at a home near Buffum and Concordia. One man was shot and killed. A second man was shot and taken to the hospital for treatment. Police have not made any arrests. Vice President Mike Pence promised to end Obamacare during a stop yesterday in Milwaukee. He spoke at direct supply. Pence said the Trump administration will replace the health care law, the system that gives states greater flexibility over coverage for its residents. Let's take a live look outside now. There's going to be that scorcher right there as we take a look at a little bit of our cityscape, I believe. Going to want to put on some sunscreen today. UV index of nine. Ouch, Mark McGinnis. Yeah, that means a burn 30 minutes or less on this Sunday morning. And I'll step out of the camera here in just a second. And the wind's already blowing, Julia. Look at this. Uh, the leaves there in the background on these uh, trees in Menominee Falls. Uh, wind gusts are already over 30 miles an hour in some areas. It's south-southwest right now in Menominee Falls at 7 miles an hour with a temperature of 70 degrees. And as you saw that sun coming up over the horizon, we're going to warm up pretty quickly on this Sunday morning. Currently sitting between 69 and 76 degrees and we are dry. We don't have any rain on Storm Team 4 Max. We're coming into the clean sweep. That UV index again cranking up there to a 9. So if you're going to be outside throughout the day today, have the sunscreen on, wear a hat, cover your skin as well as you can because we are mostly sunny this morning. We'll stay that way through the afternoon. 90 degrees. That's the second day in a row, Julia. We haven't hit 90. Before yesterday, it was September 6th was the last time we were 90 degrees. Now we're doing it in back to back days. All right, that's nice. Yeah, that was 277 days. Wow, mm. that we had to wait for that. In other news, federal and local authorities are on the hunt for these six fugitives. You see them here. They're considered by law enforcement to be violent gang members. On Friday, a gang task force arrested 11 at five locations in our city as part of an eight month investigation into the Milwaukee based street gang called the Gangster Disciples. Those 11 people now face drug and weapons charges. The Milwaukee County Medical Examiner says that in the past three days, it responded to 12 probable drug overdoses. There's also been a surge of overdoses in children with seven children dying over the past 19 months in the county. A record 343 people died from drug overdoses last year. This year, county officials say that number could top 400. Milwaukee police still asking for your help to find this car, possibly connected to a murder of a well-liked bartender. The car is a white four-door Chevy Impala. You see it there? That's a suspect vehicle. The lower part of the front bumper is black. The windows are tinted. Dylan Steffen was shot and killed during an attempted robbery last month on the south side. He was an active member of the local LGBT community. He was a bartender at This Is It in Cathedral Square. If you know anything, call Milwaukee Police at the number on your screen. The Orlando Pulse nightclub attack that killed 49 people was one year ago tomorrow. The money raised last year is going to good use. The 49 fund just gave eight Orlando area high school graduates $4,900 scholarships to help with college. This will be considered for the scholarship the LGBT students had to maintain a GPA of 3.0 or higher and show a commitment of improving their community. From New York City to Seattle, anti-Sharia law demonstrations and pro-Muslim counter protests took place in nearly two dozen cities nationwide yesterday. Ashley Corum reports. No religious law. For the second weekend this month, Demonstrators have taken to the streets in more than 20 cities across the country. God bless Saturday, hundreds of protesters were marching against Sharia law, a group of principles that govern the moral and religious lives of Muslims. Sharia law is against freedom. It's against human rights. The protest put on by Act for America, an organization the Southern Poverty Law Center says is an anti-Muslim hate group, but organizers and protesters say the march against Sharia law is about fighting for human rights. Is ACT anti-Muslim? No, ACT is against Sharia law, right? Sharia law, which is degrading to women. And not far from where many of the anti-Sharia protesters were holding up signs and banners, pro-Muslim demonstrators were also taking a stand. I want to stop the attacks on Muslims, on Arabs. We cannot allow any group to be scapegoated. I don't think that Muslims are here to impose Sharia law on anybody. I think they're here in America because they value 
American values. Saturday's demonstration was one of the largest protests against Islam put on by the organizers. I'm Ashley Corum reporting. 536 this morning. This Sunday morning here, much more still to come on Live at Daybreak. Up next. Whoever you are, girl, boy, them or they, just turn yourself in so we can just get past this and please keep my family in prayer. Okay, this grieving family's plea after a young pastor, a pastor senselessly gunned down in Milwaukee. 539 on your Sunday morning. You are lit. That's nice. That is really nice. Port Washington, the sun, maybe about, oh, eight, nine degrees above the horizon there. Yeah, it came up at 512 was the official sunrise on this Sunday morning. It is 74 degrees right now in Milwaukee. There's another beautiful shot. We're going to have uh, pretty much any camera you, we're going to show you this morning is going to be gorgeous because it is warm, it is sunny, and this is the most pleasant part of the day because we're going to crank in the heat here later this morning into the afternoon. Southwest winds are already steady at 16 miles an hour at Mitchell International Airport. It's going to be another hot, breezy day. Here are the numbers right now. Waukesha, Milwaukee County. We have anywhere from a comfortable 69 degrees to a warmer 74 downtown. Waukesha is at 71 along with New Berlin, Menominee Falls, Heartland, Oconomowoc, Genesee, Eagle, also McGuanago. You're at 71 degrees. Let's take you south and west into Jefferson, Walworth, Racine, and Kenosha County. We have 69 to about 74 degrees. So Racine's the warmest spot. Pleasant Prairie, Union Grove at 69. Elkhorn, you're at 70 this morning out in beautiful Walworth County and Jefferson along with Whitewater and Sullivan at 71 degrees. North in the Fond du Lac, Sheboygan, Dodge, Washington, and Ozaukee counties in a similar temperature range here, 69 to about 76 degrees. So Sheboygan, you're the warmest location. Port Washington, the coolest at 69. Beaver Dam, you're at 71 degrees. We are dry right now and will be throughout the day today. Lots of blazing sunshine out there, but I want to show you out to our west. Rain and thunderstorms back in South Dakota and also Minnesota. They're headed east. They're going to increase the chance of severe weather in northern Wisconsin. They're going to see severe storms, unfortunately, later today, but also uh, rain as well. Down here in southern Wisconsin, we are looking like we're only going to see some cloud cover out there during the course of the day. High temperature again, pushing 90 degrees this afternoon under mostly sunny skies. Julia will eventually get into some rain. I'll show you when that happens with the seven day forecast. Coming All right, up. Thank you so much. A vigil was held last night to remember a young pastor who was gunned down in Milwaukee. Andrew Phillips was murdered Thursday at 55th and Casper. Last night's vigil took place at 18th and Keith. Phillips' brother told us he is praying for the shooter to turn himself in. It hurts all around. You know, it does, just doesn't affect my family. It affects his family because he also got maybe a son or mother or whoever, you know, and it's just senseless violence. And I just pray that he turned himself in. I pray that he come clean and maybe his conscience just eating at him, that he just can't let this go by. Phillips leaves behind 10 children. Police say they're looking for a known suspect in this murder. Coming up on Live at Daybreak, find out why a dog walked across a high school's graduation stage. And they came to watch the magic, but got something else. What prompted a nasty hazmat situation at Disneyland? Here's your winning lottery numbers. Someone in California, oh, they're so lucky. They're now $447 million richer.
trending today. <laughs> Okay, this one's actually pretty serious. Three men have been detained in Germany. Police say it had to do with a suspicious conversation that they had on board a plane that was bound for London. Yeah, uh, the plane landed at Cologne Bonn Airport last night. Police destroyed a backpack that could be assigned to the three suspects, uh, but said he could not give any more details, the spokesperson said, about the men at this stage of the ongoing investigation. It's always good to be alert and yeah. just to listen to what's going around you. You never know what could happen. Absolutely. Some park goers at Disneyland got a nasty surprise Friday night. This one's funny when a flock of geese flew overhead and pooped on the crowd below. Mm. The geese, wow, they must have ate a lot. I don't know what they were eating here. They, were fed. <laughs> they, they hit about 20 people. It was initially reported that someone had thrown human feces on the group. Come on. What? So a hazardous materials team was called to the scene. What? Uh, 11 adults and six children were taken to another area to get cleaned up and Disney provided them with clean clothes. That's very nice of them. That, that is very nice of them. I, I guess it happened at night there. So geese, <laughs> geese eat a lot. I, don't know, I play a lot of golf and all they do is nonstop eat. All right, this guy running around on the right of your screen never had a chance. A Braves fan was given a big head start on the race uh, on the warning track in the outfield against the freeze. Watch what happens. He's so cocky here. He's confident. He thinks he's going to win. Oh, 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 eat some dirt, buddy. <laughs> uh, the distance between the two runners obviously quickly shrunk as the mysterious and very fast freeze. The exact opposite of the freeze. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, that's this so embarrassing. Is, I feel bad for that guy. Well, you know, it's kind of self-induced embarrassment when you get cocky <laughs> like that. Waving your hands, thinking you're going to be like the hero, and you end up the Falling. goat. Yes. It's a funny video. Yeah, so congratulations, uh, young man. You made us all laugh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm getting used to these temperatures. Walking yeah. outside, it feels like almost room temperature when you go outside right now. It's yeah. really nice. Isn't it funny about Wisconsin? We go from like uh, complaining about how horrible spring is to, oh my gosh, it's 90 degrees out. Right. Like it's like almost like a, a light switch. One extreme uh, to the other. Figurative light switch. Yeah, it, it seems like there's no middle ground with spring here in Wisconsin. It's either cloudy, rainy, and cool, or it's 90 degrees. And then we're headed on there path again today. Kenosha right now, you're at 73 degrees. Absolutely gorgeous morning out there. The dew points at 58. Southwest wind at 11 miles an hour, which at this point is pretty refreshing. Current temperatures range from 69 in Port Washington to 76 Sheboygan. Here in the city, we're at 74 along with Racine. Waukesha now to 75, so it's warmed up 5 degrees there in the last hour. So the sizzle continues today. We're going to hit 90 for the second day in a row and for the second day in 2017. Eventually, later today, we're going to see some cloud cover from storms to our north and west. We'll keep it dry. It looks like all locations for today, but eventually we'll get into some rain and it'll be in the form of thunderstorms that could be strong uh, as we get into later in your work week. Right now, though, we're coming in with a clean sweep as we check in with Storm Team 4 Max at 548 on your Sunday morning. A wider view, though, will show you that we have rain and thunderstorms out in the Dakotas all along the stationary front that extends east across northern Wisconsin. These thunderstorms are firing up. They're going to ride, uh, ride right along the stationary front throughout the day today. And as they move into Wisconsin and also central Minnesota, it's going to be sunny, it's going to be hot, and that's going to be favorable for these thunderstorms to intensify and give us a slight to enhance risk of severe weather in northern Wisconsin and also central Minnesota. Note down here in southern Wisconsin, we are not in that severe weather threat. However, it is just adjacent to us in that front. It's stationary. That means it's going to have several days of thunderstorms really close to us, and that's why we'll eventually get into some rain. Note today at noon, thunderstorms get into northwestern Wisconsin. We'll see a greater chance of severe weather later this evening in northern Wisconsin, 5, 8, 9 o'clock tonight. We keep it dry all day long here in southern Wisconsin, and with that sunshine, again, hitting 90 degrees for the second day in a row. As we track overnight tonight and into Monday morning, those severe storms could give us a chance of isolated rain, 
especially Fond du Lac and Sheboygan County overnight tonight into Monday morning. Otherwise, we will have to wait for an isolated chance of rain Monday afternoon. That's probably our first chance of seeing some decent rain in the form of isolated showers Monday afternoon. Today, though, sunny, breezy and hot. Here's what it's going to look like a high temperature of 90 degrees overnight tonight. Partly cloudy. We'll get some of that cloud cover from storms to our north. 70 degrees for your overnight low. And your Storm Team 4 seven day forecast. Uh, let's show you a couple more days of 90 or hotter today and Monday, Julia. Monday's high 91. Could see an isolated storm in the afternoon. Uh, again on Tuesday, an isolated storm possible, a high temperature of 88, and a better chance of storms Wednesday, a high temperature of 86. We're not going to really break the intense, well, we're going to break the intense heat but we're not going to break the humidity. It's going to be warm and muggy right on into the weekend. You know, this makes me think about a lot of people. Make sure that you call your parents and friends and anyone who might not be by any AC. If there's any possibility of that, just make sure they're okay with three days of 90 degree heat. All right, a service dog walked across a Georgia high school's graduation stage after helping a senior earn her diploma. Joe Hinkey introduces us to Morgan Rath and the service dog. She says changed her life. If Morgan Rath is out for a walk, you can bet Paisley here is by her side. We go out in public a lot. Like, I'll just go to stores and walk around or go to parks. Morgan Taylor Rath. In May, they took their most memorable walk yet, crossing the graduation stage. When Morgan began high school, though, she doubted she would finish. Starting freshman year, I suffered with severe anxiety and depression. Um, I ended up in the hospital sophomore year. I started self-harm and all of the things that go with depression and anxiety. Her life changed as a junior. Morgan met Paisley and started service dog training courses. Then Morgan began her senior year and with the school's approval, brought Paisley to class. Without a doubt, 100% Paisley, I think, was the last piece of the puzzle to help Morgan go through. Her principal says with Paisley next to her, Morgan became a different student. I think the big thing that we found was um, that Paisley, who was one of my one of my favorite students this year, Paisley was just a a calming factor um, for for Morgan, which really I think helped her with her academics. And in the hallways, Paisley impacted Morgan as well as the rest of the class of 2017. And I got a lot of feedback like, "Hey, seeing your dog every day really makes my day a lot better," which made me feel good because I wasn't only helping myself, but I was helping the people around me. Paisley here helped Morgan until the final seconds of her senior year. Paisley relieved Morgan's anxiety and depression so she could earn her diploma. She really put that hope into my life because I didn't have that before. And as Paisley became the first dog to walk this stage, she also gave Morgan the support she needed to even attend her ceremony. Walking across the stage, which I wasn't going to do originally, um, I feel like it was able to tell people that, hey, I did it. Like, hey, I made it this far. And um, all those people who talked behind my back and younger grades, they saw that, hey, I was strong enough to make it through. That was Joe Hanke reporting. Still ahead on live at daybreak, music and dancing are some of the best forms of self-expression. Coming up, a program that allows students from Marquette and UWM to showcase their talents. Hi 56, welcome back. We've been partnering with UW Milwaukee this summer to, so, to showcase some of the work done by journalism students. This week, UWM student Sam Schmitz brings us the story of a dance program called Hype. A large crowd gathered in the Union Ballroom on May 3rd for the UWM Hype Showcase. JC Cunningham, the founder and executive director of Hype, kicked off the event. At University of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, make some noise. Throughout the night, there were 18 performances and solo acts composed of dancers from both UWM and Marquette. Each crew brought something unique to the stage, whether it was their music selection, appearance, or even their props. To spectators, this may appear to be a lot for the dancers to handle, but that's not the case for choreographers like Martez Holmes. Learning choreography, it takes a lot of determination, uh, a lot of self time, like your own personal time, just like two or three minutes out of your day, to go ahead and commit yourself to, you know, if you really love it, then you'll do it, you know. And then you get rewarded by performing, showing people what you gained out of experience. Senior Kayla Flungy says that each show helps hype grow. I know JC reaches out to a lot of different dance teams and like squads, so we get a lot of people to come out to these shows to perform, so then that just brings in more community members. Well, if you missed Hype's performance tonight, fear not, there's more to come in the future. You can catch our next show on May 19th at 7 p.m. at the Zalazo Center.
For Media Milwaukee, I'm Sam Schmitz. 558 this morning, much more still to come on live at daybreak. A whole new hour of news. More on our big story this morning breaking overnight. A man dies after being pulled from Lake Michigan. Hear from the person who tried to save his life. Right now at 6, breaking overnight, a man drowns in Lake Michigan near Whitefish Bay. What exactly happened remains a mystery this morning. Plus, near miss, a Milwaukee police officer dodges a bullet while on duty. Officers recover several guns and arrest two men with a long rap sheet. And Vice President Mike Pence promises to end President Obama's signature law to stop to a, during a stop in Cream City. That's still ahead on Live at Daybreak. Right now, from Milwaukee, this is today's TMJ4, Live at Daybreak. Good Sunday morning to you this June 11th. I'm Julia Fellow. Let's take a live look outside at 601 at Miller Park here. Going to be another scorcher out there. Hopefully, uh... If anyone's inside there, they uh, won't have to be near third base. That's what you always try to avoid. <laughs> and I hear that you could possibly burn within 30 minutes of being outside today when it's peak out there. Yeah, absolutely, Julia. We're talking pretty much from late morning through the afternoon. So 10 a.m. to about 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. UV index of 9 this afternoon. That means you can get a burn in 30 minutes or less to any exposed skin. If you don't have a hat on, say uh, cover your skin or have sunscreen on. So be aware of that sunscreen and the UV index pretty high today. So you're going to want to be out uh, if you're out and about wearing the sunscreen. 75 already in Waukesha this morning. It's absolutely gorgeous outside, but it's going to quickly turn warm, maybe even uncomfortable for you at times later on this morning and this afternoon. Temperatures at the 6 o'clock hour range from 69 in Port Washington to 75 Sheboygan in Waukesha here in Mill Milwaukee, we're at 74 degrees. Want to show you the thunderstorms are forecast to move from Minnesota into northwestern Wisconsin later this morning and this afternoon. This is noon today. Severe weather potential is enhanced to slight across northern Wisconsin. So be aware of that if you have family or friends who are up north uh, today. Severe weather is forecast to roll through there later on today. Down here in the southern part of the state, Sizzler. 90 degrees for Milwaukee, second day in a row. 89, 88 for Waukesha, Racine, and Sheboygan. Lots of sunshine. So again, that UV index is going to be very high throughout the day today. Eventually, we're going to get into some rain and some thunderstorms, Julia. I'll show you when with your Storm Team 4 forecast coming up. Looking forward to that. Thanks so much, Mark. Breaking overnight, the medical examiner confirms a man pulled from Lake Michigan last night has died. This happened shortly before sunset. A man who was at Clody Park in Whitefish Bay told today's TMJ4 he heard a man yelling for help in the lake. Anthony Turner said he immediately ran into the water and got within 20, 30 feet of him. However, he said he was unbearably cold and had to turn around. He got out there, pulled the man in. Once we got him close enough, me, Jay, and two other guys pulled the man with the stick, got him on the beach. Others called 911. Officers arrived to assist the victim. The man's name has not been released. New this morning, Milwaukee police investigating a double shooting and murder from overnight. This happened at a home near Buffalo and Concordia. One man was shot and killed. A second man was shot and taken to the hospital for treatment. Police have not made any arrests. Police also investigating a murder that happened yesterday afternoon near 22nd and Locust. A 25-year-old woman was shot and killed after a fight. An 18-year-old man was also shot and injured. A Milwaukee police officer arrived and survived an encounter with an armed suspect last night. This happened near 26th an hour at about 8 o'clock. A plainclothes MPD officer was conducting an investigation when someone fired at the officer, nearly striking him. The suspect took off in a car, which then crashed near 12th and Lloyd. The two men with criminal records were arrested. The Marathon County father who triggered a statewide Amber Alert is behind bars this morning. Police say Jamie Hunt was armed when he took off with his son Jaden yesterday afternoon. The Amber Alert was canceled just before 10 last night. Both found safe near a home where Jaden was taken. This critically missing boy also found safe. Police tell us nine year old Aaron Whitlock was found last night near 76 North. Vice President Mike Pence, he promised to end Obamacare during a stop in Milwaukee. He spoke yesterday at Direct Supply, a company that sells equipment for services for senior living communities. 
Pence said the Trump administration will replace the health care law with a system that gives, he says, states greater flexibility over coverage for its residents. U.S. Senator Tammy Baldwin issued this statement about Pence's speech, saying in part working families in Wisconsin who are already struggling to make ends meet will be especially hit hard by this partisan legislation. She goes on to write that Vice President Pence needs to explain to Wisconsin families why Washington has to make them pay for less care and increase the number of people who are uninsured. Milwaukee reached 90 degrees for the first time this year. Many people were out doing whatever they could to stay cool. Thousands flocked to Bradford Beach yesterday to catch rays in their swimsuits and party in the sand. The few people who ventured out in the water called it a rude awakening. That's because the temperature in the water was just 53 degrees. According to the National Center for Cold Water Safety, that's considered very dangerously cold and potentially life-threatening. I was going to get in with the kids and then I put a toe in there. I'm like, oh no. Cold shock reaches its maximum intensity between 50 and 60 degrees after just a few minutes. We have a link to heat safety reminders from the Milwaukee County Health Department at tmj4.com slash links. And we have a winner. Someone in California matched all six Powerball numbers to claim an estimated $447 million jackpot. The Powerball spokesman says that winning ticket was sold at Marietta Liquor Deli in Sun City. That's in Southern California, not here, even though our city was pretty sunny yesterday. The lucky winner has yet to come forward. Coming up on Live at Daybreak on today's TMJ4, another top Trump administration official plans to testify before Congress. But first, we're getting our look at the fake devices worn by terrorists who went on a killing spree in the heart of London. On the look outside, another 90 degree day. Make sure to give your family a call. Make sure they're safe during this hot weekend as we take a beautiful look outside in Waukesha. It is 6.09 on your Sunday morning. You're looking at the sun over Lake Michigan in Port Washington. That's the perspective there. Absolutely gorgeous start to the day and everybody pretty much has a nice start. Down in Kenosha, 73 degrees, mostly sunny right now. Southwest wind at 11 miles an hour. Uh, I've been talking all morning long how this is the most comfortable part of the day when you have these uh, high temperature days of upper 80s to mid 90s. You know, the morning is the best time to get out as far as being comfortable. And that's what we have for you right now. It's only going to last a couple more hours before these temperatures really start to heat up. 69 degrees right now in Port Washington. We're at 74 in Milwaukee, 75 Waukesha and Sheboygan. Coming in with a clean sweep across all of southern Wisconsin on Storm Team 4 Max Radar. We don't expect any rain today. Different story, though, up in northern Wisconsin, where we have thunderstorms still off to the west in South Dakota and southwestern Minnesota. They are forecast to move east, and with that, a slight to enhanced risk of severe weather for northern Wisconsin later on this morning through the afternoon and the evening hours. We'll keep it dry down here. And again, another scorcher on the way. A high temperature of 90 degrees. Look for sunny to mostly sunny skies from the morning, Julia right through the afternoon and that UV index again of nine for today, which means you can burn within 30 minutes. So be safe out there. In other news, London Metropolitan Police released pictures of the fake explosive belts worn by the men who carried out the attack in the British capital last week. These are just water bottles wrapped up in duct tape. They drove a rented van into pedestrians in a London bridge and killed three, then jumped out and stabbed people at a market. Five people died of stab wounds. Almost 50 people were wounded in the attack. Looking ahead, Attorney General Jeff Sessions says he plans to testify before the Senate Intelligence Committee on Tuesday. In a letter released yesterday, Sessions says he would appear before the committee in light of last week's testimony by former FBI Director James Comey. During his testimony last week, Comey says that he couldn't explain why Sessions played a role in the president's decision to fire him, despite his recusal from the Russia investigation. 6-11 is Sunday morning. Hope you're having a great morning so far. A lot still ahead on Live at Daybreak. Coming up, a real-life superhero is gone but not forgotten. We take a look back at the career of Adam West. Plus, are you already wanting cooler temperatures? Really? Mark will let you know when the heat breaks near Storm Team Forecast. His seven days next.